competition for me because I'm the strongest, so it's just kind of like a different. Oh, well, we should let her think that. It's just a fact. It's not a personal opinion. No. And it's no, no. not a reflection on what you can't do. In Brie Larson's defense, she had no other character trait to fall back on. Black Widow and Captain Marvel are two of the most iconic female characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Although Captain Marvel has superpowers and Black Widow does not, they are both skilled fighters, mentally tough, courageous, smart, and independent. They are both considered strong female characters, but what if I told you that one of them is actually stronger than the other? And it's not the one with superpowers. I'm Abby, and this is Science of Story, where we come together to explore the secret ingredients behind our favorite stories and learn how to use those ingredients to make our own writing unforgettable. Are you a writer on a mission to craft strong female characters into your story, but you're not sure how to pull it off? You want your strong female characters to be role models, not just to young girls in your audience, but to anyone who reads your book, watches your film, plays your video, video game, whatever kind of story you're writing, you need to include strong female characters. And I don't mean cold, apathetic female characters who go around smashing things and beating people up just to prove they are tougher than everyone else. I mean female characters with strengths and weaknesses. Female characters who aren't afraid to show emotion, but also aren't afraid to fight when they need to. Female characters with deep internal conflict, desires, fears, and misbeliefs that hold them back from finding true happiness. In this video, we are going to analyze the character of Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, and Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff. We're going to explore the differences between these two characters and solve the mystery of why so many people love Black Widow and so many people hate Captain Marvel. Is there a science behind the strong female character? Grab a notebook and let's figure it out. Because today's video is all about strong female characters, I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to host a fundraiser here on my channel for my favorite nonprofit organization, Operation Underground Railroad. If you're unfamiliar with their work, OUR is a group devoted to rescuing victims of human trafficking around the world. The human slave trade is currently the fastest growing criminal enterprise on the planet, enslaving over 40 million people globally. 70% of which are women and girls. Since 2013, Tim Ballard and the OUR team have been working undercover with law enforcement to rescue children from human trafficking and sexual exploitation. You can help bring an end to this atrocity right now by donating to the fundraiser here on this video. YouTube handles all of the processing fees, so 100% of your gift today will go directly to rescuing children from exploitation and giving them a life of freedom. Visit OURrescue.org to learn more information on what you can do to fight slavery and bring awareness to this crisis. And now, without further ado, let's get into our study. Okay, so get this. If you type into Google, why does everyone hate C-A-P? Look at these suggested searches. Why does everyone hate Captain Marvel? Why does everyone hate Captain Marvel Reddit? Captain Marvel in WandaVision? Captain Marvel actress? Why does everyone hate Captain Marvel movie? If you actually search any of these terms, you will find article after article of fans debating the reason for so much collective dislike of Captain Marvel and the actress Brie Larson who portrays her. But when you start searching around for discussion on the character of Black Widow, AKA Natasha Romanoff, you'll be hard pressed to find a single article that doesn't praise her strength, skill, and ingenuity, as well as fan voted lists ranking her as one of the best Avengers, side by side with the most loved characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So this immediately gets my brain asking questions. Like, if we love strong female characters so much, then why is it there are so many fans of Black Widow who doesn't even have any superpowers and so few fans of Captain Marvel, who is supposedly the strongest and most powerful Avenger in the MCU? Believe it or not, there is actually a science behind this. 
But in order to decipher that science, we first have to ask ourselves a defining question. What makes a character strong? When most people hear the words strong female character, they immediately think of a physically fit woman beating the living daylights out of a group of guys without breaking a sweat or breaking a fingernail. But what if I told you this is not what defines a strong female character? Strength is not quantified in how many push-ups you can do or how many assailants you can single-handedly knock down in a fist fight. Strength has far more to do with your mind and emotions than in your physical abilities. And I get it, okay, I get it. As writers, we don't want to portray girls and women as being helpless damsels in distress who need a male hero to come rescue them. Obviously, this is absurd. Hollywood and traditional media did women a disservice for a long time by portraying us as the weaker sex, physically and emotionally incapable of fighting our own battles and saving the day. But unfortunately, a lot of writers have gone from one extreme to the next. The pendulum has swung so far and so dramatically in the other direction, it has given many writers permission to ignore character development altogether and simply copy and paste all the belligerent traits we hated about stereotypical male characters and write them into female characters instead. This is a problem. Why? Because being strong isn't about overpowering others. In fact, physically aggressive and dominating personality traits are often and rightly considered toxic because they usually mask a deeper insecurity and lack of confidence. Show me a person who is prideful, arrogant, and constantly boasting about their own strengths, and I'll show you a person who is deeply insecure. Perhaps you know someone like this in your life. They may be attractive and popular, but their constant need for attention and praise eventually makes them difficult to be friends with. If you know this person well, you can probably identify their insecurities and forgive their arrogance because you realize that it's their coping mechanism. And beneath that mask of strength and power, they actually feel not good enough. It's the classic bully issue, which is so well known it's become a stereotype that bullies are cowards. Why? Because they feel the need to assert aggression and violence on others to make themselves feel powerful and strong. Whether this aggression is physical, emotional, or verbal, it all comes from the same place of toxic insecurity. They feel the need to put others down in order to raise themselves up. This kind of behavior usually makes a person very unlikable and uncomfortable to be around. My stunts. I did, I did my stunts because I thought that that's what everyone did. Uh, and then... Tom, Tom Cruise over here? No, I'll be the first me, not the next Tom Cruise. Thank you very much. Wow. Well, you know. On the opposite end of the spectrum, a socially confident person will happily extend praise to others and make jokes at their own expense because it costs them nothing. I'm sure you all saw the Jeep pushing. Oh, every situation. Way but Brie coming in and pushing a Jeep is going to make you all feel like you got to up your game a little bit. Yeah, right? we pushed yeah. the golf cart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Confident people feel comfortable in their own skin and accepting of their imperfections, which makes them more charismatic and likable in social situations. Now, I am not a behavioral scientist, and this is definitely not a personality analysis of the actress Brie Larson. I can't guess at her internal conflict or possible insecurity that led to awkward interactions like this one. I'm just speaking as a story scientist, analyzing the character of Carol Danvers, aka Captain Marvel, as told in her solo film. Regardless of what you think of her personally, Brie Larson is clearly a talented actress, but the screenplay of Captain Marvel didn't give her much opportunity to let her skills shine. I think many viewers make the mistake of blaming actors for failing to capture their heart when really that was the screenwriter's job. Actors can only do their best with the script they have to work with. So next time you watch a movie and you think, uh, I didn't like that because the acting was bad, I challenge you to go watch another movie with the same actor and better writing. Perhaps you're right, or perhaps it was the screenplay and not the performance that made the story feel lackluster. 
But back to our study. Let's compare and contrast the character of Carol in Captain Marvel with the character of Natasha in The Avengers. Now, I realize that Natasha's character arc is ongoing as she appears in seven other MCU films, but I chose the first Avengers movie because this is the first time we follow Natasha with her own subplot and learn about her internal conflict. Now, we're going to unravel the layers of these two stories using a few questions that I love to ask myself that I use all the time when I'm crafting characters of my own. What is the protagonist's internal conflict? What does she want and what is she afraid of? What is the protagonist's clear goal? Why does it matter to her? What is the protagonist's fatal flaw and how does she overcome it throughout the story? Let's start by taking a closer look at Captain Marvel's character and see if we can decipher what is it that makes her so unlikable. Your life began the day it nearly ended. We found you with no memory. We made you one of us. When the movie opens, we meet Carol Danvers, who is known simply as Veers, and who lives on the planet Kree, where she has been training to join the Star Force. Veers suffers from amnesia and recurring nightmares about a traumatic event in her past, but we don't know the context of these memories, and we don't understand their relevance until over halfway through the film. What is the protagonist's internal conflict? What does she want, and what is she afraid of? For the first hour of the movie, we have no idea who Veers is, where she came from, or what she believes. We know that she lives on the planet Kree. We know that she is a warrior in the Star Force. We know that she has seemingly unlimited superpowers, which her commander keeps telling her she must learn to control. Lose control again and you'll have to commune with the supreme intelligence. There's nothing more dangerous to a warrior than emotion. Stop using this, start using this. To be honest, this is the only hint of conflict we see at the beginning. And because it's told and not shown to us, it feels forced. Her commander is constantly telling Veers that she's too emotional, but she spends most, if not all, of her screen time showing no emotion at all. Even in scenes where we get to see her behind closed doors, haunted by nightmares, she doesn't appear to be struggling with any particularly strong emotions. So what exactly is she emotional about? What are her weak points? What are her flaws? What are her deepest desires and passions? We don't know. Because her past is a mystery to everyone, including her, we don't personally connect with her character on a deeper level. What is the protagonist's clear goal? Why does it matter to her? Carol's goal is to become a warrior in the Star Force and serve Kree. I want to serve. Then master yourself. What was given can be taken away. In other words, she's facing the exact same stakes as everyone else in the Star Force. The desire to be a good, brave, heroic warrior while trying not to let her emotions get the better of her. Can you keep your emotions in check long enough to take me on? Or will they get the better of you as always? I guess this is the ultimate theme of the story, that emotions can be used to make you stronger, but Carol's character arc, or lack thereof, fails to show us how she learns this lesson over the course of her journey. Sure, she goes on an explosive adventure to different planets and eventually remembers her past, but she never really changes as a character. And all because internal conflict was never established at the beginning. But wait, Abby. Isn't this just the amnesia trope? The whole point is that Carol can't remember her past, so how is she supposed to know what her beliefs and conflicts are? That is a fair point worth addressing. Writing a character who can't remember who they are is always going to be tricky. But there is a way to do it well, to use your character's amnesia as the driving force behind their internal conflict. A perfect example of this is Anastasia, which is centered around the protagonist's journey to remember who she is and reunite with her family. From the very beginning, that's Anastasia's very clear goal, to solve the mystery of who she is. We see that she wants home, love, and family more than anything else. 
but she doesn't know who she is or if she even has any living family in the world. This inner conflict makes us empathize with her as a character. I would have loved to see a similar conflict in Captain Marvel. They had all the ingredients to make Carol Danvers an active character with a desire to discover who she really is. But because there was no deep want or need established at the beginning, we have no idea how her personal internal conflict relates to her actions. At one point, Fury says to her, I know a rogue soldier when I see one. We've got a personal stake in this. And she gives no reply. It's almost like the writer was trying to make it personal to the protagonist, but they failed. And as a result, they failed to give Carol character strength, the kind that can only develop through overcoming weaknesses and defeating misbeliefs. A lot of writers struggle to write strong female characters because they think all it takes to make a female character strong is to make her physically strong and tough and ruthless and emotionless. This is problematic because the underlying message is showing emotions is a sign of weakness. And I think we can all agree just from a mental health standpoint that this is a toxic concept. All humans are meant to show emotions. It's what allows us to communicate and forge meaningful relationships with one another. And it's what makes an audience care about the characters we're following. We have to see their emotional responses to what's happening in order to feel empathy for them. Here's what I find interesting. With the rise of cold, unfeeling female characters in fiction, we have simultaneously seen an increase in strong male characters showing emotion and deeper levels of feeling without losing their strength of character. There are plenty of male heroes who show their emotions and have weak moments. They cry and struggle and show compassion. That's what makes our heart go out to them. That's what makes us fall in love with them. So my question is, why can't a female character show emotions and have the strength to overcome obstacles and learn from her mistakes? Why can't she even make mistakes? In my opinion, this is the worst part. Writers thinking that giving female characters flaws and weaknesses is some sort of insult to them. It's not. Okay? Speaking as a woman, I can tell you that it is not an insult to women. Flaws and weaknesses are essential to character growth. Because without flaws and weaknesses, there can be no change, no journey, no character arc, and no theme for your audience to be left with. And beyond that, perfect invincible female heroes perpetuate the toxic message, especially to young girls, that you need to be flawless in order to be strong. You can't ask for help. You can't show emotions. You have to constantly be in fight mode. I don't know about you, but as a writer, these are not the themes that I want my audience to be left with. So going back to Captain Marvel with our final question, what is Carol's fatal flaw and how does she overcome it throughout the story? Carol is a Mary Sue character meaning she has no flaws and is virtually perfect. That's what makes it so hard to relate to her and empathize with her. A perfect character has no internal conflict, no flaws or weaknesses, and therefore no transformative journey to go on. Ironically, the theme of the story was trying to be, you need your emotions in order to be truly powerful, but this idea is lost among the chaos of the overly complicated plot and never grounded to a very clear internal conflict within Carol's character. If the screenwriters had focused on making Carol a flawed hero who is conflicted and struggling from the start, we would have been able to sympathize with her and she would have been able to change as a result of her journey. I tell people my sister moved out west. You're a science teacher. Your husband, he renovates houses. You're thinking about moving, but you're gonna wait until the interest rates go down. That's not my story. <laughs> now, let's take these same character questions and test them on Natasha in The Avengers. When we first meet Natasha, she is summoned to help rescue fellow S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Hawkeye from the clutches of the enemy. 
The rescue mission is personal for Natasha because she was once on the other side of the fight, working as an assassin for the bad guys, and Hawkeye was the one who spared her life. Before I worked for S.H.I.E.L.D., I made a name for myself. I have a very specific skill set. I got on S.H.I.E.L.D.'s radar in a bad way. Agent Barton was sent to kill me. He made a different call. Although Natasha is just one of the many characters we follow in this movie, her internal conflict is clearer and more richly developed than Captain Marvel, who had much more screen time in her solo film than Natasha has in The Avengers. Yet the writers managed to craft a compelling subplot, which drew me in right away and made me care. What is the protagonist's internal conflict? What does she want and what is she afraid of? From the moment we first meet Natasha, we see her using her strengths to her advantage. And I don't just mean her ability to single-handedly beat up a room full of guys while tied to a chair. First, we see her use her wit and interrogation skills to draw secrets out of the enemy. It's a tactic that she uses a lot throughout MCU films and implies a deeper strength than brute force. It's how she eventually manipulates Loki into revealing his plans, by using his own weaknesses against him. But in the first scene, we see that Natasha has a special relationship with Clint Barton, aka Hawkeye, and will drop everything to join the rescue mission to save him. Right away, we can tell she is not a perfect hero. She has shame about her past and fears about letting her guard down or becoming vulnerable to others. What is the protagonist's clear goal? Why does it matter to her? Around the midpoint of the Avengers, when Natasha interrogates Loki, her goal and inner conflict is revealed. It's really not that complicated. I got red in my ledger. I'd like to wipe it out. Can you? Can you wipe out that much red? Dracoff's daughter? Sao Paulo? The hospital fire. Your ledger is dripping. It's gushing red, and you think saving a man no more virtuous than yourself will change anything? This is, this is such a brilliant scene because it shows us exactly what Natasha's deepest struggle is, and it gives her a moment of raw emotion. We watch her go from cool and composed to being emotionally triggered by Loki unearthing her inner struggle. You pretend to be separate, to have your own code. Something that makes up for the horrors. But they are part of you. And they will never go away. Natasha wants to find redemption after working so long as an assassin for the enemy. That's her internal conflict in a nutshell. And in my opinion, this is the main reason why the 2021 film Black Widow failed to do Natasha's character justice. They took a solid internal conflict that was really not that complicated and made it overly complicated. This is a common mistake a lot of writers make. They think bigger is better when it comes to elaborate plots and fantasy worlds. Captain Marvel, in comparison, is a textbook example of spending too much time building up the external worlds and forces at play, but not spending enough time developing the main character. So going back to Black Widow with our final question. What is Natasha's fatal flaw, and how does she overcome it throughout the story? You're a spy, not a soldier. Now you want to wade into a war. Why? What did Loki do to you? I won't touch Barton, not until I make him kill you. I got red in my ledger. I'd like to wipe it out. In this scene, we can clearly see that this is Natasha's misbelief, her fatal flaw. She feels like she still has blood on her hands, and that's what drives her decision to plunge into a battle alongside the Avengers. This is the central burning question at the core of Natasha's character. Can you really wipe out that much red? Natasha is on a mission to find redemption, to make peace with herself and her past. That's what drives her actions throughout the whole series. 
Through Natasha's interactions with other characters, we watch her extend the forgiveness and compassion she wishes she could show herself, constantly reminding others that their past actions don't define them, and what they did under the control of an evil force was not truly who they are. How many agents did don't. I Don't. Don't do that to yourself, Clint. This is Loki. This is monsters and magic and nothing we were ever trained for. You can't protect against yourself. It's not your fault. You didn't know what you were doing. Ironically, this is the very lesson that Natasha needs to learn herself, and we know that she won't be able to find peace until she defeats her misbelief. See, you don't even need to have a full circle journey of change character arc for your hero, especially if you're writing a series and plan on bringing this character on a longer journey over the course of several books or movies. But you do need internal conflict. You need your strong female character to have flaws and weaknesses. That's what makes us empathize with her, and that's what makes us connect with her humanity. If the writers of Captain Marvel had spent more time pondering these three questions, maybe they would have crafted a Carol Danvers we would all have loved and rooted for. If the writers had allowed her to have flaws and weaknesses, then showed us how she overcame those flaws to become an even stronger character, we would have been clamoring to see more of her journey. And most importantly, it would have given young girls in the audience a fantastic role model hero to look up to. If you're a writer and you want to write strong female characters that we can love and root for, I hope this video has inspired you. Remember, you can ask yourself these questions about any of your characters to deepen their internal conflict and make them that much more human. What is the character's internal conflict? What does she want and what is she afraid of? What is the character's clear goal? Why does it matter to her? What is the character's fatal flaw and how does she overcome it throughout the story? I'd love to know your thoughts on all of this, so comment below and let's continue the discussion. Who do you like better, Black Widow or Captain Marvel? What creative decisions would you make to strengthen either of these characters? Again, don't forget to donate to the fundraiser on this video to help Operation Underground Railroad rescue children from human trafficking. Any gift helps, however small, and again, 100% of your donations today will go straight to fund missions to help set kids free. In my opinion, this is the most crucial issue that the world is facing right now, and it's our responsibility as a community to come together and help solve problems like this in any way that we can. Visit OURrescue.org to learn more about how you can help to bring an end to slavery. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos and publishing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. If you wanna dive deeper and take your storytelling skills to the next level, head on over to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons to get access to exclusive content like live training sessions every month, diving into a specific aspect of writing and publishing. Until next week, my friend, rock on.